All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thanks for being here. Uh, this work that I'm going to present is about uh, a method uh, that uh, I developed with uh, Eleonora, Daniele, and Flavio, uh, as you can see here. This is uh, about an approach for uh, network optimization uh, uh, for, for Mount Etna. Uh, but the method is uh, is a general method that uh, can be applied to uh, different kinds of uh, geophysical networks. So I briefly uh, elaborate on this in this presentation. As uh, you, you you remember from from Daniela's presentation, so we have uh, we already have this uh, gravity network uh, at Etna with uh, iGraphs at uh, SLN and MNT stations. And also uh, PDN that uh, we have the AQG on is uh, located somewhere here. So um, you also saw the, uh, the map of the old uh, gravity network of Etna. So we have the uh, summit road going uh, around this area. You'll, you'll see it marked on, on a map in the uh, next uh, slides. And, uh, another road uh, a little bit farther from the summit, the Forestale Road. So uh, when the project started and we, we were planning for uh, having this uh, network, we, uh, of course, we were planning to have uh, several MEMS stations. And uh, one um, important question from the very beginning was where to uh, place these uh, new gravimeters, how uh, we can uh, design the network such that we can, such that we can uh, can, uh, get uh, the most uh, out of the uh, data that uh, this this network can uh, provide us with. So this this led to uh, this presentation. So uh, the the task the main task of this network is to minimize the uncertainties uh, associated with the sources uh, of mass change that we want to detect. This is uh, equivalent to maximizing the information that we uh, acquire uh, about these, these sources. So uh, in this presentation, I first introduce what kind of uh, an ob objective function I use uh, for this purpose. And then uh, I show you uh, the results from some analytical solution that we developed for uh, four gravimeters. This was to uh, validate our uh, next numerical optimization scheme, which is uh, developed based on uh, genetic algorithms. Uh, after uh, validating the solution, we had one main question, which is uh, the minimum number of gravimeters that we need to have uh, in order to uh, meet some certain uh, criteria regarding the, the level of information that we want to have about the uh, sources of mass change. And uh, in the end, uh, we um, de de developed a method for this uh, task and uh, applied uh, this to, uh, to the network uh, at Mount Etna, considering uh, several uh, constraints like the roads and places that we didn't want to place the gravimeters on. And also, uh, we wanted to consider the existing gravimeters as a part of the network. So, uh, let's get to the problem. Here, uh, the, the red circle uh, shows a, a point mass. Uh, this is a source of mass change, like a new magma coming into the system. And we have uh, a gravimeter on the surface represented by this uh, triangle. The uh, gravity change that we measure is the vertical component of uh, gravity change that we uh, can uh, calculate from uh, Newton's equation. So this is the main observation that we uh, uh, have uh, in, 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 uh, regarding uh, the gravi gravity data, gravity change observations. So here you see some, some con uh, contour lines. Again, you, first of all, you have the, the, you see the gravimeter here on the surface uh, showing or recording 20 microgol of gravity change. This amount of uh, gravity change can be caused by uh, point mass uh, of uh, 0 0.2 times 10 to the 11 on this line. So wherever on this line we have this mass change, uh, we're going to uh, observe 20 microgol of gravity change at the surface. Uh, same uh, applies to the other uh, contour lines. So in a way, th these are equi mass contour lines, meaning that you can have, you can have for example, 1 uh, times 10 to the 11 on this line. 
and everywhere on this line, uh, if we have such a mass change, we uh, observe 20 microgram. Basically, it means that uh, from, uh, as we know, uh, from one gravimeter only, we cannot uh, constrain the uh, mass change, the amount of mass change and its location. So we at least need to have uh, four gravimeters uh, to, to constrain all these uh, four parameters, uh, x, y, z, uh, uh, the, the coordinates uh, of the, the mass change location and the amount of mass change or uh, the, the unknowns. So if we assume that we have um, four gravimeters like, like this, then um, we can find, uh, mathematically, of course, we can find the, the, uh, the contour lines that uh, intersect, and this will be the, the exact location of the, the point mass. And of course, uh, it, it's a 4D problem. We, 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 in the same way, we can also uh, estimate the amount of mass change. However, this is, uh, um, the, the case if we have uh, exact observations without any error, which is never the case. The, the, basically, you see these um, um, uh, errors represented here uh, in, with these uh, gray lines here. So we all of the observations that we have are uh, always as, uh, having some some errors. Therefore, rather than getting one point uh, in, in the space, in the solution space, we always have a volume. So this uh, dark, darker gray uh, volume represents uh, the possible solutions for, for this problem. However, if we change the location of these uh, gravimeters, as you see in this uh, in panel B, so all these uh, gray areas are going to intersect uh, in, in a smaller volume. So this uh, shows that the, the network configuration plays a very important role in minimizing the uh, uncertainties associated with uh, the, the parameters of the source of mass change. So basically the, the task that we uh, have here is to find the, the best place such that this volume represented here by this dark gray area, area is uh, minimized. So we can show that uh, this uh, is uh, actually equivalent to uh, maximizing the information content if we uh, define the information content as the inverse of uh, uncertainty volume. In mathematical terms, what I uh, refer to as uncertainty volume is uh, actually the uh, determinant of the covariance matrix associated with these four unknowns. So uh, we can relate this covariance matrix to the location uh, of the gravimeters on the surface and the uncertainty associated uh, with them. And uh, in the end, we calculate the determinant. This is uh, the volume that we want to minimize. The inverse of the determinant is the information content on the other hand. So we can maximize this as, as the objective function. Now I go to the analytical solutions that we developed. The first analytical solution is a 1D network. So in this case, we have uh, three gravimeters uh, on a line. So we assume that the source of mass change is in a plane. We already know that uh, uh, everything is constrained within a plane. And uh, for such a problem, we can uh, calculate the, the determinant uh, analytically and we can optimize, uh, we can minimize the determinant and the uncertainty uh, analytically. In the end, we figure that the optimal configuration is like this, one gravimeter right above the source and two at uh, distances represented by uh, the, the, uh, two distances basically uh, equal to the square root of three over seven times D, which is the depth uh, of, of the point mass. The second analytical solution that we developed is a, uh, this one. In this case, you're having the top view. So the, the, source, uh, the, the, the source of mass change is right below the origin of the coordinate system. And uh, in this case, again, uh, we can uh, solve everything analytically. We can uh, construct the, uh, covariance matrix and find the determinant in that way and um, um, we can minimize it. So the optimal configuration is like this. Again, one station is going to be right above the source and then the other three form this uh, equilateral triangle. And we know uh, this distance between the center of the network to, to the peripheral stations. So this is a kind of characteristic distance. 
Now um, we can validate our numerical op optimization scheme. So I'm not showing uh, any details about that because uh, this is well established uh, in the literature and uh, we right away uh, uh, check the, how um, um, it agrees with the analytical solutions that we developed. In the first case, again, uh, we consider uh, um, um, a network along a, no a line so this cross, this green cross represents the uh, point mass and the uh, gravimeters are constrained to be along the x-axis. In this case, you are seeing the top view again. So uh, after uh, running the optimization, the final uh, configuration that we get uh, are, uh, is, is like this. And uh, these three lines represent the uh, location from the analytical solution. So as you see, there's a very good agreement with uh, the analytical solution. And uh, this uh, red number here is the number that we expected to get. And the coordinates, x coordinates of these stations, as you can see, are uh, very, very close to this number, uh, showing a good agreement. Same we did with the 2D uh, case, um, 2D uh, solution. And in this case, again, we have the point mass here. And uh, the four stations, after several iterations uh, in the numerical, um, optimization scheme, we ended up getting uh, this configuration. As expected, one station is right above the point mass and the, the three other are at uh, distances which are um, equal to this characteristic distance that we, uh, uh, we found in this uh, analytical solution. The whole network could be rotated and uh, these uh, stations could be located on this circle which we refer to as a characteristic circle. So uh, playing with the numerical scheme, we simply increase the number of uh, gravimeters to see what uh, kind of configurations we get. And here we have 20 gravimeters, but only one point mass. And uh, it was interesting to see that a number of gravimeters were exactly above the source and all the other were um, on this uh, characteristic circle. Uh, another thing that we, we observed was that uh, we uh, had this, um, uh, clusters of gravimeters, which we didn't want to uh, have because uh, this way, um, uh, yeah, having uh, gravimeters in one, one spot um, leads to uh, some, some kind of unoptimal network in the sense that we cannot uh, gather more information about uh, the different places in the network. In order to avoid these clusters, we uh, considered the uh, uh, correlation uh, an empirical correlation function between the gravimeters. And uh, once we introduce these correlations uh, to the uh, optimization procedure, then uh, the gravimeters are going to keep distant from each other in the procedure uh, in order to um, uh, avoid uh, increased uh, determinant values. So basically this uh, empirical correlation function uh, can, can uh, fix this issue of uh, uh, cluster formation. The next uh, task was to uh, extend this uh, procedure to the case of having multiple uh, point masses. In this case, uh, I have two um, point masses at uh, below the origin. One is located at uh, three kilometers. The other one is at six kilometers. And so both of them here are uh, represented by this uh, green cross again, but they overlap. So you see two characteristic circles corresponding to these two sources. And uh, if we simply um, add up the objective functions from, from the uh, individual optimizations, what we end up having is uh, a configuration like this. Uh, and as you can see, this, the optimization is ignoring the uh, deeper source. Everything is focused on, on the shallower source. And this is uh, telling us that this um, uh, objective function, the new objective function for, for a, a multiple uh, target point masses is, is not functioning well. Uh, same here. In this case, we have three uh, different sources located in different uh, places, as you can see. Two of them are at six kilometers. One is again at three kilometers. In this case, we have uh, 12 gravimeters. We expected to uh, ha have four gravimeters for each one of these cases because they are far uh, apart. But again, using the same objective functions, we see that two of them get five, one, one gets a two, and this is not uh, correct. 
But if we change the objective function like this, if we add up the logarithm of the uh, individual objective functions rather than adding them, adding them up, then this issue is also uh, addressed. So I don't go into details of this, but uh, this is uh, also known in the in the literature, and uh, we can explain uh, why this is the case. Uh, but I'm not going to into details. Same, same objective function uh, applied to this problem uh, gives us the, the result that we expected. The, the gravimeters are not exactly in the, uh, on, on top and on the circle. This is because the correlation between uh, these point masses and the gravimeters. Uh, but uh, the, the overall uh, configuration is, uh, is uh, optimal. So now uh, the, the last uh, task is to have many, many uh, point masses in a target volume uh, at the volcano. So we started with synthetic data and uh, we wanted to see uh, how we can uh, constrain, how we can find the minimum number of gravimeters that we have and at the same time optimize, optimize the network. So here we have a grid of, uh, you see uh, 24 uh, point masses at a depth of two kilometers, but we have uh, several layers. So it's from uh, starting from two, two kilometers going down to six kilometers. So this is uh, basically a cube, uh, rectangular cube, rectangular uh, cuboid, let's say. So um, in order to find the uh, uh, minimum number of uh, stations, um, uh, gravimeters that we need in this case, we introduced the uh, concept of, we use the concept of information content. So for each uh, point mass, we know um, we can calculate the amount of information content uh, corresponding to a four gravimeter optimal network. Therefore, we have this number for all of the point masses. And uh, in these optimizations, we uh, started to uh, increase the number of gravimeters from four uh, to, to more gravimeters. And in, in each case, we calculated, uh, after the optimization, we calculated the uh, information content um, for all the point masses. And uh, here uh, in, in this uh, figure, you can see uh, the results of this uh, iterative uh, optimization. So the, just focus on the, on the blue curve here. Uh, the, the horizontal axis shows the number of stations and the vertical axis shows the percentage of the point masses which uh, received uh, enough information content by the number of gravimeters that we have on the curve. So here we move to five gravimeters, six gravimeters, and as you see, as the number of gravimeters increases, uh, more of the point masses are receiving the minimum information content that we want uh, for them. So we continue this, this procedure, uh, add a procedure of adding one gravimeter and uh, re repeating the optimization. And in the end, we uh, find that for this particular target volume, having 29 gravimeters uh, gives us the minimum required information content. Of course, you can have other, uh, kind of, uh, other kinds of information contents uh, that correspond to five uh, gravimeters or six or seven or any number that you uh, have in mind. And corresponding to these new information contents, you can repeat the procedure in the same way and find the optimal number of the, the minimum number of gravimeters. And uh, these curves are simply showing the uh, normalized amount of uh, information content for uh, sources. Uh, I'm, I'm here uh, showing only the sources at six kilometers and uh, two kilometers with this. Um, uh, green and uh, gold colors. And you see that after 29 gravimeters, all of the uh, point sources have received uh, information content, a different way of re uh, representing the same results. The second approach, which is much more efficient than the first one, because I, I have to add, uh, as I said, we are repeating the, the full optimization in, in uh, each iteration. That can be very, very time consuming. In the second approach, what we do is we start the optimization with four gravimeters, as before, these four uh, uh, triangles without numbers. And then uh, we, of course, have the same curve. We, we calculate how many points have received the necessary uh, amount of information content. And uh, then we remove these points from the target uh, volume. So as soon as we have uh, enough information content for the point masses, we remove them from the uh, optimization. 
And then uh, we fix these uh, gravimeters, like we, we started with four. So we fix this four, and we only find the optimal uh, location for the new gravimeter, for the fifth gravimeter. So basically, this network is going to be uh, uh, growing uh, one gravimeter by one gravimeter. Not every gravimeter is going to change in this case. But the, the, the target volume is shrinking as uh, the optimization uh, proceeds. So it's a kind of uh, greedy optimization that uh, gives us uh, an, an optimal solution in a very, very uh, uh, short uh, amount of time. So, but uh, at least for this case, we see that uh, interesting enough, we get the exact same number of uh, gravimeters, at least for um, in information content corresponding to four stations. And the, the curves we have uh, for the uh, individual point masses are also uh, similarly uh, showing this. So this is uh, just putting uh, all the uh, figures that you already see, uh, you already saw side by side. And um, for, for um, a higher number of, uh, uh, for a larger, let's say information content, you see that uh, the, the curves that we get in, in the second approach are, are smoother. And we uh, usually get a lesser number of gravimeters necessary to, um, to meet this um, information content uh, criteria. So, and last we apply this to Mount Etna. So here we have uh, the uh, I graphs, SLN, MNT, and the uh, AQG uh, is the absolute gravimeter here. The target volume at Etna was uh, chosen based on the eruptions in the past uh, 30 years, the sources that were uh, imaged in the past 30 years. And uh, here you see the top view of uh, this target volume, and this is uh, the, the cross section. Uh, the uh, south and north cross section. And um, the gravimeters, the, the MEMS, uh, are represented as these uh, black triangles. So in the optimizations, uh, the gravimeters were, uh, as, as Daniela also mentioned, were allowed to uh, be located on uh, these two roads. So the, the last uh, optimal network that we uh, got is composed of uh, these. Uh, 13 MEMS gravimeters for an information content level uh, of uh, four gravimeters for each point mass. And here you see the similar curves uh, that show that uh, 13 stations are going to provide, are going to cover the entire target volume. And if we use 10 stations, we can cover 95% of um, these uh, target point masses. And uh, yeah, in, in, in here we, uh, we just uh, zoom in on uh, this uh, optimal network for, for Mount Etna. And uh, we see that every, every station is, uh, every MEMS station is uh, simply located on the summit road. To summarize, we have uh, analytical and numerical solutions for gravimetric network design and any complex, um, uh, network can become considered, any com complex kind of uh, constraint can be added uh, to, to these optimizations and the necessary number of sensors we can uh, find, we can determine uh, by using this, the approaches that uh, I showed you. These uh, optimizations are very rapid such that you can run them on your uh, laptop in the field. So in case you want to do some campaign measurements, you can still uh, use this uh, approach. There will be open source MATLAB codes that I, that I have developed for this uh, purpose, and we, uh, they can be converted easily to other uh, programming languages, and uh, therefore they, they can be used uh, in the field, as I mentioned, um, without very uh, large computational demands. And the same uh, technique can be applied to uh, networks of seismometers or GPS and other kinds of sensors. The principles are the same. The only difference would be uh, how we uh, construct the covariance matrix and uh, the, 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 the rest of the procedure, the optimization procedure is uh, going to be the same. Therefore, uh, yeah, it, it, it can be applied to uh, all different kinds of uh, geophysical monitoring networks. So I'd be happy to have questions. Thank you.
Are there, <clears throat> are there questions for Mehdi? Yes, Marvin. Uh, yes, hello. Um, thanks for this really interesting uh, presentation um, and uh, way of looking at how to design a network. I was wondering <clears throat> in the final uh, application to the stations on Mount Etna, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe in this uh, part, um, did you include also like, let's say additional information such as uh, roads or maybe areas you wanted to exclude for some sort of reason? Or is this basically a complete 3D or 2D topography based? Uh, um, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. That? So uh, the, the constraints that we had uh, were, of course, we, we fixed these gravimeters here, like uh, the eye graphs are fixed in the network. Uh, they are already there. So the optimization is being done in the presence of these uh, gravimeters. This is one point. Then the road constraints, the gravimeters were allowed uh, only to be located uh, at 200 uh, meters distance from, from the center of the roads. So we had this road constraints uh, as uh, the, the main constraint. And at the same time, here we have uh, Valle del Bove. Uh, this is a, an area that cannot be accessed. It's very hard to access. So mm -hmm. and, uh, in some uh, places, like, like here, the roads were very uh, close to, to the uh, borders of this uh, Valle del Bove. And we also had this exclusion area. Yes, as you, as you mentioned, we had this uh, exclusion area. I'm not showing it in the figure, but you can see the, 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 the contours show this uh, um, the part that cannot be uh, accessed. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it is, the, the, the technique is, in general is very flexible with adding um, more uh, and complex kind of constraints, uh, constraints like exclusion constraints and um, uh, like uh, road constraints and polygons. Like in some cases, you want to specify a polygon mm -hmm. and have all of your uh, gravimeters, all of the sensors there. This is also uh, possible very easily. Okay, cool. Thanks. Okay. More questions? Either raise your hand or yes, there is a question from Vincent. Yeah, hi, uh, thanks for the nice talk, uh, very interesting. I was wondering if um, <clears throat> this morning we talked about uh, possible effects like ground deformation, which would have an impact on the reading of the gravity meters. Is that something that has been or can be taken into account in your, uh, in your design? And do you expect it has a significant effect or not? Yeah, indeed, a very good question. Um, actually, this is uh, in a way related to the next presentation that uh, I'm going to give. But uh, in these uh, uh, optimizations, we assume that uh, the gravity data have been corrected for the deformation effects. So, um, but in, in the end, it, it is possible to show that if we optimize the network under this assumption, it, it will uh, be also optimal uh, once, once we have a network and uh, once we have a gravity network and we are sure that significant deformation is also going to happen. But um, the, the, the way that um, the, the whole uh, network data should be processed is, is a topic for, for the uh, next presentation. Okay, well, thanks a lot.